In this video, we're going to cover the tasks view. The tasks view is located on the make screen next to the schedule. And if you choose the tasks view, then this is what you should be seeing in front of you. Now, what exactly are we looking at here? The tasks view is a full list of every operation that has to be performed for all of the manufacturing orders that are presently in an open state. So this is more or less like an exploded view of every single operation. If we were to look at all of them and only look at the operations themselves, then what we would see is the total operations for all of these manufacturing orders combined into a single tasks list. Now, what is the best way to explain how to use this page? I mean, what is the information we're looking at? Um, easiest way to go about this is to just collapse the entire menu based on the resources. So firstly, what we're looking at here is the resources, which we went through earlier in earlier videos on the settings screen, where we talked about what resources constitute. Depending on your operation, a resource can constitute anything such as an individual person. Um, it could be a workstation. It could be uh, something that identifies maybe a type of person, such as staff or work floor employee. It could be the name of an individual. Whatever works best for your business is probably how you will arrange the resources when you're using these functionalities um, as you adopt Katana. Small manufacturing companies will basically define the resources usually as people, because that's usually the first thing that they have is labor before getting automation. And so that would be an easy way to kind of set this up by people. In our case, we have a combination of people plus a workstation. And so you can see here um, what, uh, what those are and also the order of them. And in addition to that, you can see the planned quantity of products that are going to be manufactured and going through operations at these different resources. Following on to that, uh, you can also see the planned amount of time that those resources will be utilized. And for example, in this scenario, um, even though Katana as a software doesn't have resource-based capacity throughput, what it does have is it has the ability for you to at least define what your resources are. And then in addition to that, kind of be able to break down what it is, is in terms of time is being requested from those individual resources. We don't make any calculations against it because we don't actually have the ability to define how often is the paint booth available every single um, week, for example, or how often is the assembly station available every single week. But at least you'll have an idea of how much work is passing through those different resources so you can uh, plan accordingly your specific needs. Now, um, before we expand this out a little further, I want to show you um, a couple other things. Uh, that would be included on the settings page, which we covered quite some time ago. But all of these things are starting to relate back to other things that we've already covered. On the resource page, you can actually drag and drop the position of the resource. Because if you, if you do so, it actually changes how things are displayed inside of the uh, tasks view. So for example, I took the table saw and I dragged it to the first position on this list. So when we look at the tasks view in the make page, you'll see that the table saw has been dragged to the top and Mary is in the second position. So one way that this can become very advantageous or useful for your business is if you organize your resources within the logical flow of your manufacturing operations. So it's not uncommon that your specific resource will do dedicated processes, such as a table saw is going to cut wood, as an example, because a table saw will not paint wood, as another example. So um, you can specify or create that order that's logical uh, for your operational flow. And this is really nice when you start looking at individual manufacturing orders at the task level from the list view. And you can actually do that through um, uh, filtering. So let's say if we have manufacturing order number two, dash two, we can filter that out and see, okay, I'm doing um, cutting, gluing, assembly, and packaging for manufacturing order number two at these dedicated workstations. And um, if you have your resources also reflected 
and how your operations are performed order wise, um, then you can also pick up on that in real time because when you're filtering a manufacturing order and you have it organized by resources that have a logical flow of the general process, then you can see um, at what stage that those items are in. So you could have like three green check boxes for these first three processes. And then you know that at some point uh, this one should be in a work in progress, for example. So I'll actually kind of show you how that looks. So if we take this manufacturing order number two, and you see that we have the table saw, Mary, assembly station, and packaging desk, then we can update our um, specific tasks to the ones that are completed. And you know, depending on how you're using the software, right now I'm just updating them manually, but depending on how you're using the software, um, if you're using, let's say, the shop floor functionality, which is available in our pro, pro, pro package, um, this updates in real time and it updates on the tasks list in real time. So when we have that filtered out, you can see currently MO-2 that those other two operations have already been completed and they dropped off the list. And you'll see that this one is currently a work in progress. So all of those tasks that also get completed then pass into the done tasks list as well. But before we move over there, we'll cover a few more areas here on side here inside of the uh, tasks view so the tasks view carries a lot of the same information that's available in the manufacturing order down to the uh, tasks view as well such as the associated manufacturing order deadline and um, the manufacturing orders that you see here on these views are completely reflective of how the manufacturing orders have been arranged in the make queue so if you are looking closely and you notice here that manufacturing order number five, sales order number three, manufacturing order number five, especially MO5, on the make queue itself, manufacturing order number five is the first thing that has to be worked on. If manufacturing order number nine, which has the lowest rank in the queue, when you're looking at your task list, tasks list at each workstation, you'll see MO9 is also at the bottom. So there's this direct feedback that happens where when you make a change to your schedule, then the schedule is also changed at the tasks level too for not just um, your team, but also your operators in real time. So if your operators are gonna begin work and it's at the early part of the day and you have to get a rush order through, you can do all of this even remotely and have that high level of control um, with an instantaneous feedback. So these are some of the advantages here that can provide how um, how you schedule things in real time. Uh, whereas before, you know, if you're planning out your production and you aren't very flexible, then you have to plan things kind of in advance and lock them in. And then if somebody calls you up and says, oh, I want to make a change, like, oh, I'm sorry, you have to wait three days. I can't change anything. But with this, it gives you at least a little bit of added flexibility to maybe make those changes um, by having the real-time information in front of you and in addition to that, um, an ability to make that change uh, and have it reflected for the workers who are doing things on the shop floor. So this is one of the advantages of the shop floor control app whenever you are uh, working with manufacturing in real life with Katana. So the MO deadline is also captured from the manufacturing order level. And the delivery deadline is available for all manufacturing orders that are linked to sales through a make to order process. Product is here, planned quantity is also here, and then the operation is specified with the planned time. So as we're getting more and more into this concept of planned versus actual, it will turn up itself a lot, especially from a reporting perspective, because now we're tracking the planned time, the planned output, and also um, the planned consumption of ingredients. So all of those elements are getting tracked and you can uh, have real control over um, what is really going on with respect to each of those three areas. Now here on the tasks view, we also have um, the ability to print out your tasks list onto a sheet of paper. Um, Sometimes this is the way to go if you're not using the floor functionality. You just want to 
make a task list for all of the manufacturing orders that might have, let's say, a deadline for today and print those out, send it to your people, and they just check it off as they go out throughout the day and they can't leave work until they do. So there's so many different ways to do that. You take the paper back, you start filling in the ones that were completed, and then your stuff is up to date. You might do that on a daily or weekly basis, depending on how big your operation is. But if you do need real time, shop floor control is where it's actually happening in real time and updating this page in real time. So uh, again, that's available on the pro package. Uh, we also have export functionality too. So you can export all of your open um, tasks. This is probably better than a PDF, depending on uh, if you need to kind of organize and, and chop and change some things uh, to print out for your floor people. The done list of tasks is an overview of all the tasks that have been completed. Now we've already marked a few of them as completed already, and it contains information very much similar to what is available on a completed manufacturing order, which we haven't covered just yet, but we will cover a completed manufacturing order flow when we start, uh, when we start working past this task section. But uh, basically what you see here is uh, everything is more or less the same as it was on the previous page with the exception being that uh, there will be an actual, an actual time specified uh, whenever you are uh, completing orders. There will also be a completed at time on a per task basis. As we start to scale up the different features that are related to the floor operations, the values that are coming out of all of these inputs are uh, something that makes uh, those values reportable against. So like a very simple example could be if I have three operators that are working on some dedicated operation and maybe they are supposed to make 10 units of product uh, within, um, let's say, an hour. But one guy is making 12, another one is making 8, and another one is making 10. Then the guy making 8 is operating at basically 80% efficiency, and he's increasing our cost by 20% due to the fact that um, he is operating under par with respect to our planned time. So being able to evaluate the performance of operators is one thing uh, just from the completion of things time time perspective um, also keeping track on your processes uh, do i have a process that is consistently um, taking the same amount of time maybe one of my machines isn't working correctly so having insight about where a bottleneck is occurring is something that is can be reported against and um and being able to export some of your done tasks will give you the opportunity to evaluate some of these things. You can also export them based on any specific date range. So if you wanna look at performance numbers from, let's say last month, you can choose last month as an option, export your completed tasks and see who worked, what resources worked on what, how long did they take, compare the same, same types of products that are going through those processes and, um, and really start to evaluate and understand what is the nature of your operations. That more or less sums up our tasks view for both the open and done tasks list. Um, we will now cover uh, what it looks like to complete a manufacturing order and then go into the done manufacturing order section on our make screen.